Did a fact, but I don't know. I don't know. How you been? <laughs> I've been good. Yeah, I've been pretty good. You know, I got so far so good with everything. <laughs> did you uh did you ever get COVID? No. Um and uh I got back from Mexico and California last year, just in time for lockdown. Uh, I just got my first COVID shot. So. Oh, me too. Yeah. When did you get yours? Uh, around the corner in Red Hook. When, though? Uh, last Thursday. Okay. So I just got mine on Tuesday. So you're, you're like a, you're a pro. You're like ahead of me <laughs> by oh, five days. You got this Tuesday? Yeah, just two days ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go back on the 22nd, so. Uh, yeah, I'm going on the 27th. Yeah. It was weird. At first, I had a little bit of a later one. Like, I made one for today mm. or yesterday. I can't remember. And the second one that I had set up right you know, right away was like the 21st. Oh, where would you have uh, to yeah. go for it? Huh? Where would you have to go for it? Uh, just a couple of towns. I'm upstate right now, so I just went a couple of towns over. Where upstate? I'm in the Hudson Valley. I'm in uh, uh, north of Rhinebeck, south of Hudson. I'm oh, nice. Kingston's across the river, you know. Yeah. Uh, Berkshire is not too far. Yeah, there's a camp in Phoenicia every year. Every year. Not yeah. too far. I mean, you know, you cross the river and you could be probably in Phoenicia in, I don't know, half hour. I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly, but yeah. Uh, it's so nice up here and and with the spring coming i'm very excited about it because i don't know when i saw you on the um union square when we ran it you know when i (laughs) when i what do you call that ambushed um it's okay yeah no you were a sport um i mean i think i was that was probably only what weeks before all this went down right this was in the winter time Right. Because uh, then I tried to kind of fissy if we could do something shortly after that, and it just you know wasn't yeah. going to happen. And then um, and then I was like, ah, we now this seems to be really working, and it was kind of nice. I mean, and I can kind of I could do a lot more than I could with just just only audio, like to promote it, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's turned out, and it keeps me company. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm a lonely guy. Oh, you live up there all year around. I am now, yeah. I oh. left my, yeah. I kind of left. I mean, I'm not far, so I can get down. I have to. I'll have to get down there. My, for instance, I have my, I have a teenager, and he's with me right now on oh. vacation on his. But, and he, his mother's in Los Angeles, but she's coming home, for she's working out there. But that's coming to an end right around the end of their school year anyway. So we're figuring out like, does he want to stay with me? Does he want to go back for a while? Yeah, with his mom. So you know, we leave it up to him and. uh but his school is in Brooklyn. So I, you know, as soon as we, they come back full time, he'll be down there. So I can't, I, if anything, I might move to a bigger place or find a, a different place, a little close, even further south of here. Mm-hmm. I see. You know, so that's what's going on. So yeah, I kind of got burnt out and um, I'd been wanting to move anyway and was starting to think about leaving the city. I just, I just, just for, not just uh, the burnout, even just for change, you know, I've been there so long. Yeah, I hear you. I you know, I mean, I go out for festivals or little vacations and things like that. You mm-hmm. you get gigs where maybe you like what's a typical or not an unusual gig that might take you out of town for a period of time. How long could that go for hypothetically if you get a big job? You go anywhere from a week to two or three months. Yeah. You know, exactly. That happens. Maybe Nurse Jackie or. Some episodic work, right? Yeah, Miss Jackie was in New York. Are we uh, officially yet, or what? Oh yeah, that's another. <laughs> I forgot. That's another one of my strengths. I'll put. Yeah, I just, I just start, and I and I don't. Oh, no, that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Well, sorry. That's a bad example, right? Sorry, it took this long to do this. So. Uh, don't don't worry about that because it's not that unusual where mm-hmm. things just take. It's always worth waiting for. All right. Well, I'm ready. For, you know, ask away, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry I cut you off there. So, yeah, no, no. I so, so, okay. So, but you might be gone for months. I guess my point is, is 
it it it's it helps you get those breaks from the oh, stress yeah. of living in a city like New York. Yeah, usually I go in the winter time. I was gonna go out in February, but you know, with the COVID. Right. You know, I figured and there's nothing going on. <laughs> there's that too. Oh, so, and I don't do very well, so there's nothing going on in LA, you know. Yeah. Um isolated. Right. Uh, do you have a, I mean, I know mostly about the film work and stuff. But have you done much theater? I started off, um, I guess you would call it theater, but in the Lower East Side, back in the day when there was a big community before gentrification, um, there was, um, I fell upon this community. Um, musicians, poets, um, actors, and a friend of mine, and uh, I don't know, we just, there was a place called ABC No Rio, which was around the corner from my apartment, which I had no idea. And I took an acting class with a friend that summer, Bill Hickey at HP Studios. Sure. And uh, we met someone there who brought us to ABC No Rio. And it's in Lower East Side and Livingston Street. And it's, uh, old building and you walked in, you, I walked in, I felt like I was in the wild west. It was just, it was a controlled chaos. And, you know, they had the, Matthew Courtney was like the MC, and it wasn't like an open original, like a, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Traditional open mic, you know? You just sign up, and Matthew would get up there and do something and then uh, call the next act. So me and my friend, uh, Steve Prestiani, who I went to high school with, I don't know, we just started writing and performing there. So, right, performing being the word. So it wasn't necessarily comedy or theater, but it was, it was performance. Comedy. It was like physical comedy. Oh, it was, okay. <laughs> yeah, black comedy, physical comedy. Um, and that lasted for nine years. Wow. Yeah. And it wasn't a money thing. We just, you know, we, I stumbled upon it. And um, about nine years later, that's when people started moving out, getting pushed out right. of New York. And the so, whole community just disappeared. So that was like the 80s, essentially, what we're talking about? Uh, 90s. Uh, early oh, 90s. really? Oh, well, late 80s, early 90s. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I moved out of there in 97. I moved to Brooklyn in 97. Okay. Yeah. Back back to the neighborhood in a way. And I did plays in the East Village, Lower East Side, you know, uh -huh. as well. You know, other people's plays. But um, if you want to call that theater uh, performing. Uh, yeah, it's, why not? Yeah. Uh, so, so was it, and then in that culture where there was so much happening in uh, downtown um, in that period, uh, I mean, that was a kind of a uh, hot spot. Yeah. I mean, for the arts, politically, you know, um, uh, community wise, it was just, you know, I caught the tail end of it, luckily, you know, because it was going on for a long time, you know, you know, from the Jim Jones days. And yes. Oh, I missed all those days, you know. I mean, I caught the very tail end of it. Uh, of the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. But you were living down there, right? So, but you were, what were you doing? Um, yeah, I was living on Suffolk Street between Riverton and Delancey, right around the corner from ABC No Rio, which I had no idea was there. Right, all that time. And you didn't need, you know, I had a rent control apartment, uh, which I still have. I <laughs> uh, never give up a New York apartment. Not if you're smart. You know, and um, no one really needed a steady job. You know, rents were so cheap. And you get, get a job for a month and then you leave. You know, you got enough money for a while and then you uh -huh. just perform, you know? Yeah, I don't know that people know that about New York City, that it really was like, it was as though Wall Street swooped in all of a sudden, they figured out some secret sauce and Wall Street and you know, the politicians kind of, got, you know, the developers, in other words, got yeah. together and they realized that there was a, you know, just an enormous amount of, of money to be had. 
when I walked out and saw the New York Times delivered it on my stoop to someone in the building, I knew something was going on. <laughs> that, that's the day I went. Oh, man. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Yeah. I remember, like, when I moved into Brooklyn the first time, there were two. I had two periods of time, but the first time was 87. Uh-huh. And uh, I moved into Carroll Gardens. Oh, wow. Um, or, uh, yeah. So I'm in Redwood, so. Yeah. Yeah. No. And if I was terrified at that young age to go, just even just to like my post office was in Red Hook. Oh yeah, still there. And <laughs> right on Clinton, or was it or Court Clinton? On Clinton Street, just there. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So back back then, we were you know like yeah, there was a lot of hype about how dangerous Red Hook was, and I'm sure that existed, but it was also really exaggerated, like. Um, to the degree where uh, like a polite kid like myself who grew up in Forest Hills on the mean streets of Forest Hills, you know, was afraid to go into a neighborhood like Red Hook at the time to get my mail. Like well, if there was some special delivery there. Right. I mean, deep down in Red Hook, like where I am, was, I mean, was, I heard it was really bad, you know, because when the crack epidemic came. Yeah, that's when we're talking about anyway, 87. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I heard. And I, I think it was on, you remember Life magazine or something? Or Life? Life, sure. What do you mean? Yeah. I think it was on the front cover about Red Hook was the worst city, worst place in the country or something like that. Really? Dangerous, yeah. Wow. I would have to uh, check. So maybe I wasn't wrong to be a little bit yeah. careful. So where, where are you now? You're in Red Hook, right? Yeah. You said? Yeah. Are you like closer to the Van Brunt area, that area? Actually, I'm right on Van Brunt. I used to be on Dykeman next, next to the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the uh, owner sold the house. I was living in the house and then uh, found a place right across the street from the Locks of the Tail and, uh, on, and uh, right on Van Brunt, the main street. So, Well, I started seeing you not long after that, like I'd say in the 90s at some point. And you start your face started popping up in, in, in indie films, some shorts I had seen. Once I started really, really kind of getting into the right. into that, you know, I guess in the 90s, mm -hmm. I started. When did that start for you? Um, well, actually, when I left Manhattan and moved into Brooklyn, because we never made money excuse me made money performing i mean it was just for the love of it. i know yeah if anything we we spent money you know yeah right exactly on drinks or whatever and it was just like being in the moment never thought of you know i was in the moment so i remember waking up one morning in brooklyn and i went oh my god what the hell do i do with my life now because it just that, that disappeared and i never knew what i wanted to do um, and then like a month, I don't know, a couple of months after I moved to Brooklyn, I got a commercial agent and I started doing commercials, you know, pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then slowly started doing short films and then. Right. Was it your, did you just kind of like the, it seemed like maybe you were figuring it out as you went. You didn't have some grand strategy, but, but. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm still winging it. Yeah, I got you. Me too. Um, but I, I mean, did you like doing commercials? Did you think, oh, this is cool? And then, you know, maybe you figure out like how you do that really well. Well, the commercials I mean, that, that they had at the time, you know, before the internet, when everything changed. Uh -huh. And there was a, a lot of like offbeat commercials being filmed. And there were like mini films, actually, these, uh -huh. you know. Um, yeah. And uh, I liked doing it. They were like, to me, they were like little short, short films. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to travel and got to be in the uh, World Series Yankee Parade, Ticket Take Parade, because we did a series of commercials for Adidas, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there. And uh, so that, yeah, I started, I started doing commercials. That's when I started. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, sh doing short films is certainly no not a uh, career move per se, unless yeah. you are the intention of wanting to make films or exactly. it's a bridge to doing features and finding really good projects. Yeah, which I've you done know. now, so um, yeah. 
so uh, yeah, and then from there, started doing films, you know. Um, I'm trying to think what my first one was. I think my first one was Tree's Lounge. Mm-hmm. I think I might have done something before that, but Tree's Lounge, and then after that, um, you know, more commercials, and then slowly getting TV stuff, and you know, some independent films. And, but the commercials were really abundant back then. I mean, you never had to worry about. You actually, you didn't even want to go on auditions sometimes because you wouldn't get the uh, word till like five o'clock that evening. So you couldn't really plan anything, you know. And then when you get a call back, sometimes you could be out there five days a week, you know, which was good, you know. And you got a lot of people there, and everyone would turn each other on to agents, the managers, you know. It was like that was like a community in itself. But then everything changed once the internet you know, happen. Um, and the commercials have changed, you know, because I, I know I'm not right for a lot of these straight commercials, like uh, straight up. You American, know. you mean? <laughs> like American ba- look or whatever? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah I get you. Um, so there's a lot of quirky things back then. Right. I remember. I do remember that. Uh, when you were so, when you were coming up in in New York uh, as a young guy, were you like interested? It was it was acting even on your mind? What did you? No, I actually. I mean, I've done stuff in high school and junior high, but that was things that you just signed up for. You know, uh, uh, right? Sure. The classes. So that seemed like a good one. But I never thought of it as. No, I never knew what I wanted to do ever. You know. Uh, so I feel like I stumbled upon this profession, you know. You know yes, I was just going to see. Wasn't anything I was conscious of. But did were you? Did you enjoy? I don't know. Were you? Did did you have like movies in the house? To did your parents like enjoy that, or was that something that was? Oh, yeah. In other words, did you know? Was it around? Did it seep in? Um. Yeah, I mean, watched a lot of movies, but still it wasn't anything in my mind that uh, this is what I'm going to do or have an interest in. I, it just wasn't there, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, everyone I know from high school went to college, you know? So I drove cross country just to, that was my, <laughs> that was my education, you know? Uh, but no, I never went to college. And because uh, I never knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. And, uh, hanging out in the city, you know, in the beginning when I first moved into the city, it was just basically living for the weekends before I got into performing. Sure. You know, and actually when that stopped, it was like literally overnight that uh, seemed like, then I found Avis to know Rio. And all that energy went into that. Yeah. You know? Before the energy was into party, <laughs> I, I understand. I would say, it was it was it was a fun time to be a young guy, young person in in New York yeah, City. It was, and as you, yeah. So it's it was very tempting to you know do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, now wait. It, okay, so you saying I'm just I just decided to look up some of the films. I have a cur- I have a question for you. Now I can't remember what how I'm certain this is not a very big or substantial role but you are were in river of grass which was kelly reichert's first film you know something does it say the year there yes it does 1994 that was my first film yeah that was your first one my first no i believe or feature that's right you're right you had done a couple of little shorts maybe but with larry pheasanton and that's right yeah larry by the way He's great. He's, <laughs> he's well. He splits his time between probably right near where you were talking about where you were living. He's in the east, you know, East Village, and then he's also up here. He's very close to where I am. Right, he is up there too. He's been coming out to Red Hook because of the production place a friend owns, and his son did a film. So yeah, he's been working on that. Yeah, right, but Jack. Long, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, such a great guy. The Jack I haven't seen. Well, I Jack. was talking about Larry, but sure, Jack the, too. Oh, Larry's, the whole family. Yeah. Back in the, yeah, yeah. Larry's great. I, I really 
glad I got to know him back then. And it was fun. It was, it was a lot of fun, that film. How did you get that? Was that, I don't, I haven't seen, I have a copy. Mm -hmm. I think a, um, Oscilloscope released it. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I got a copy from them, but I haven't seen it in a long time. And I'm, I couldn't remember you in it, but I wasn't, again, I don't remember just about anybody in it because it's been a long time. But yeah. I, I was wondering how you, was that, that was through Larry? No, it was through, uh, I met Larry through that. Uh, right. Kelly, I knew Kelly. I didn't know her well. Uh, I think I knew her from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and she asked me, and she, yeah, she asked me uh, to be in it. So, you know, it was great. I mean, I love her films to this day. Oh, know? yeah. It's really something. I know. She's managed to sort of grow to the, like, she's sort of at the top of that sized film, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where, you know, it's like they get the best actors, want to work with her, and, you know, but it's it's not quite indie, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's too, a little bit big for that, right? But she's she's a great filmmaker. Yeah, great person too. Yeah, yeah. so that right. yeah that was a that was a really good experience to get a taste of, you know, what a feature film was. Uh huh. Like yeah. Um and and did you was it a substantial role in that? I can't remember. Um. I mean, Larry was uh, the lead, and Lisa was the lead, and I uh -huh. played Larry's friend. So okay. So I felt like I had some good scenes with him, you know? I enjoyed it, you know? Sure. Uh, I had some fun scenes with him. I got to watch that again. I think it's time to pull it out because mm -hmm. I'll probably appreciate it on a new level, you know, because, yeah, because I should watch of you. Myself. She just had a screening about a month and a half ago somewhere. That's, yeah, she, she. Uh, I know, I've seen that where it's like, it's still, yeah, there's a lot of interest in, in her career and, that film is is still kind of not as widely known, you know, so. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, but it's a great breakout film, you know. Yeah. I guess it was like, what was it called? Something, Wendy and Lucy? Wendy and Lucy, yeah. That was kind of the one that maybe kind of opened it up a bit. Yeah, good movie. Because Michelle uh, Williams was in that. Michelle Williams, yeah. Yeah, that was. Um, so you were on the Sopranos, you did an episode, one episode of The Sopranos. Okay. Yeah, got, yeah. It was John Hurd's partner. And when, uh, oh, that had, oh, now there's, did you know John Hurd? I met him that day. Okay. But um, the thing was, you know, David Chase, you know, you, you never, um, we never cast another actor for another role, you know, that role. So, once his character jumped off the bridge, <laughs> I knew I was out because I was his partner. So when his character, you know, commits suicide, takes his life, and he yeah. like, "Don't go over that bridge," I went, "All right, I'm not going to be in this no more." <laughs> that, <laughs> that was this. That had to be very frustrating. For you know, something was frustrating for him. I know. Uh, yeah. I know he was very yeah. Uh, so. I do know also he was in the or cast. Uh, I just read this book on Mike Nichols. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, John Hurd was cast in the, he was in the original cast of the Broadway. I think it was Broadway. It could have been opera. It had to be Broadway. It was Mike Nichols. Um, cast of uh, Streamers. Remember that play? No. It's no. about an army barracks. Uh-huh. And um, I'm, I think Vietnam, but I, it, I could be wrong. It might be, could be an earlier war. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I, I don't know that I've ever seen it. I think I saw the Robert Altman made a film version of it. Oh. But in the play, um, John Hurd was originally cast in it. But, you know, Mike Nichols wanted everybody like, move the dialogue. Just keep things moving. It's quick, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. But Hurd was very deliberate and very you know, like he was an actor's actor and he didn't want to say anything without understanding why, without feeling it, you know. Right. Kind of method guy, right? So, um, and it just drove her uh, Nichols nuts. Really? And he got fired, he got fired. No, really? Yeah, he was very upset. <laughs> oh so, man, that's a shame. Yeah, 
Well, he certainly made up for it in a lot of great roles over oh, the years. So, yeah, I, re- I, I liked him as an actor very much. So. I love that guy. Yeah, I would always look forward to seeing him. And it was sad that he died even as young yeah. as he did. And he was in um, After Hours, too. Like, but, oh, right, of course. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was fantastic, right. And I, so was um, Catherine O'Hara, right? Wasn't she in that? Was she? Um, I think she, yeah. I'm pretty sure Catherine O'Hara was Catherine O'Hara was in that. And of course, then they would come together for the Home Alone movies. Right. Uh, but I think th- I think that's I think so. Um, well, so what would have been the next like uh, substantial role for you? What was A- Animal Factory? That looks familiar. Yeah, that was um, Happy Accidents. Yeah, that was. Um... Happy Accidents was a short. Oh no, Happy oh, Accidents maybe. was with um, oh Marissa Tomei and uh, oh right Vincent D'Onofrio. Okay. Yeah, that was that was when well, I was says- first starting. Yeah, I mean Trees Lounge after uh, I believe it was after um, uh, River of Grass, mm-hmm. and Trees Lounge was like. Uh, just amazing to work with because all those actors were just on the cusp of breaking out, like Samuel mm-hmm. Jackson. Um, oh, there were so many wonderful actors in there that it was really mind blowing. You know? Yeah, I haven't seen uh, Trees Lounge. I remember is that that's what you're talking about, Trees Lounge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I remember seeing that when it came out in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a fun experience. And then to act, you know, get an opportunity to act with my brother was is always special, you know. Yeah. Um, have you had a, a opportun- many opportunities to do that? Or did you intentionally try to keep distance or to- No, I mean, if something happened, it happened. I mean, we did this um, um, two things. Um, geez, I forgot its name. Um, Vince, uh, Vincent Van Gogh's grandson, Theo. Theo, yeah. He was a talk show host and he was a filmmaker. Yes. And he did these three films that they brought over to America that somebody produced. Um, And my brother directed one, John Totoro directed one, and Stanley Tucci directed one. So, and the one that my brother directed, uh, I played a... um, person in a psychiatric ward you know it was mm-hmm. no words uh, he would be doing this monologue but it, it was so and it was so engaging i mean i didn't even need to see the uh playback because it just felt so good you know and then after that we did uh this thing called park bench mm-hmm. it was on AOL, aol which i didn't even know exist at that time but uh are you saying so they had their own kind of platform? Yeah, uh-huh. they had a couple of series. They were pushing series back then, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. So we did it for two seasons. Oh, and, and it was really that. It was a blast. It was a mm-hmm. blast. Yeah, I had good guests, a lot of wonderful guests, and there was you know some a lot of funny stories in there. But, um, what uh, what's what is your approach like? Uh, what kind of uh, style do do you have? Are you? I mean, like what? What's your method? I guess if you have one. I'll repeat you... myself. I'll repeat myself. I feel like I'm just winging it. <laughs> Don't say that though. Somebody I... maybe might want to cast you. I know. No. No. I, I'm. Uh... No, the dialogue for me is the most important at first. Yeah, sure. You know, because um, the dialogue, if I get the dialogue, and then everything starts kind of flowing from there, for me, anyway, Mm -hmm. you know. uh, You know, I don't do a lot of research or anything, you know, I just kind of get an idea what the character's like from the script. Mm Mm-hmm. And if the director wants to make any adjustments, you know, he does. I don't know if I'm answering your question much. Sure, no, no, sure. I understand. Yeah. Um, Um, yeah, um, And because something like, um, have you had uh, an instance where 
it was really a, a, an especially demanding role. I mean, I remember, for instance, uh, there was a lot of physicality to uh, uh, when you. I remember watching Nurse Jackie, you know, uh, Bandit, uh, Edie's, and um, I just remember, like, I really enjoyed you in that series. I loved it. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I was only supposed to be in one episode. I think you you played God. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was supposed to be that one episode, and then they uh, decided to keep the character around. Yeah. So I was very grateful for that every year. There's the opposite of The Sopranos, where both, uh -huh. by the way, with Edie. Oh, and... Edie, if you can, God. I mean, watching her there, it's just a reminder of how much of a wonderful actor she is. You know, from The Sopranos, different character, and it was so different. You know, she was different. Oh, yeah. So, um, and that, working with all those people was just fantastic. Uh, I felt like I got very fortunate. Every year I used to uh, grow my hair long and grow whatever I could with a beard, because just in case they would call me in September. <laughs> and they did. You, know, they, like you didn't think that a wig would work? What's that? You didn't think a wig would well, be Well, like you know, you just want to be, I just wanted to be prepared, you know, yeah. If, yeah. if they called. So how many seasons did you do of that show? Or how many episodes? Do you remember roughly? Um, it was like four or five seasons. And then they changed showrunners. And the uh, the actual show um, shifted, you know, the style. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw the first episode, I said, you know, I really enjoyed it, but I can see how God wouldn't fit in. I just, you know, but they called me back for the last episode for the last season, which I thought oh. was really wonderful. Yeah. I didn't remember, but I, was, yeah, I, I know I, I felt now that we're talking about it and I, I felt it was like a show that it was on probably, you know, maybe a season or two more than it, you know, in no way, by the way, to, you know, in, 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 to, to a reflection of your work on the show, because it's great that you got as much work from that show as you did. So I don't mean to undermine that, but I feel like it's like one of those shows which did probably could have wrapped like after how many, it was on a lot of many years, actually more than I- Seven or eight, right? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think they could have probably done it in four, maybe, you know, four or five, uh -huh. but- you know, there, and I think you're right. I mean, I, I, it's been a few, a number of years since I've seen it, but I remember that there was, it sort of shifted tone at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, it just shifted differently. You know, right. Different showrunners. Um, the two original writers moved on to somewhere else, and um, so it was just a different tone. You know, it was, it was I felt like it was just as good. It was just a different tone. You know. Um, so what do you do to, I mean, uh, to like, it's been, a, it's obviously been quiet as you said, right? No, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's been quiet. Yeah. Uh, so, so thank you all the more for coming on because not necessarily, uh, fun to talk about quiet, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but I also, I really wanted to hear kind of about more about your, your, your career and your background and, you know. Uh, but are what where so what do you do to sort of just keep um i guess fit as an actor or uh, uh, a creative person in order so you can optimize the time are you able to well this uh, year i mean with the covert uh got a lot of stuff done mm -hmm. <laughs> for myself for better know? for worse Just trying to get you know things to catch up on and but after you catch up on things, you know how it is. Every day seems the same. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just fortunate that I live in a, a good community that you can walk out the door and see people, you know? Sure. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I worked on a script uh, that I was writing. Oh, good. I did, I did a short film called B61, which takes place in Red Hook. Um, and it was in Tribeca. Uh -huh. The festival. So after that, it was kind of like a test to see if it could be fleshed out into a feature. Well, if the material worked, <laughs> and 
And then I can use that as a template or something too when I send the script out, um, which I just started to do. So that was good this year. I worked on that, uh, edit, you know, re-edit it and edit it and edit it. Of course. It's difficult because every time you re you reread it, you got to constantly edit in it. You don't know when to stop. You know? There is no stop until it's, you so just it. put it aside and say, let me send it out now. And then right. yeah. it needs to be fixed later on if it's, and then fun. I guess you can, you're still fixing it in production and then you're still fixing it exactly. edit, in the editing of it. So, yeah, yeah. which editing, um, blew, when I did my first short film, uh, I, 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 it blew me away how much editing, mm -hmm. how editing is so important. I mean, I never realized it before how mm -hmm. you, you can just shift a whole movie right. like, I mean, through the editing, I, it blew me away. And yeah. I tell you, if the cat on the first shot I did, if the thank God the cat wasn't on the camera, but if it was, I walked, <laughs> I walked away from there because I produced it myself, feeling like that was better than any school that I can go to. I mean, I learned it was amazing how that just being hands on, you know, mm -hmm. with everything. So. Um. The, the short B61 that you're talking about, what is that about? Um, basically, the B61, my first- Is that the bus? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was rated at the time the, the worst bus in the city. Okay. It would, never, it would never come. You would wait, you know, the, the, the timetable meant nothing, you know, you just wait and yeah, wait. Why, what's that about anyway? So, what's <laughs> the timetables? Yeah, why? Maybe it was like, Gave, gave this gave the the bus the system a sense that they were legitimate on some level or something like you know this was the this is our schedule you know so we uh, no we're schedule. Good. I asked the bus driver one time I said is this the uh, are you early for the six forty or late for the you know six yeah right exactly because I don't know all I know is I have to be in IKEA at a certain time <laughs> so you know yeah. so that. So basically, is were, that, but is that the one that goes to Smith? It goes, um, if you take it one way, it goes to downtown Brooklyn. Okay. You take yeah, it I've been way, on that one. Yeah. It goes, I think that's the 57. It goes down to Smith. Um, okay. The other the way one that goes, picks you up from Smith ninth. I remember that bus, but, but anyway. Yeah, oh yeah. Ninth street. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the train. So those scenes, it was, uh, these two guys who always see each other at a bus at the bus stop. But in the feature, that takes place over a three-month period. You know, mm -hmm. we all know the story, but every time he needs to take a bus, you know, he sees the same guy there. Right. So I just kind of combined it all to like seven days instead of, you know. Who, so I know you're one of the guys, obviously. Yes. In the short, you're one of the guy. You're one of the two guys. Yeah. That's who's the other one. Uh, Francesco Saviano, my a good friend of mine. Okay. Yeah, he's a filmmaker as well. Oh, very good. So his stuff, he's been in mine. Uh huh. So it's a good little team. Um, Francesco, yeah. Did it make sense to develop your own material though? Always to be always developing your own thing, regardless of what work comes your way, right? I mean developing your own projects that's just that makes the most sense of all yeah i mean to get things out to do things yeah i mean in between shows i mean projects uh this is a place called bar best in park slope of course on ninth street too yeah and in, in the back they have a nice performance space but they they do music so uh, i Great knew jazz a lot of jazz yeah, and all, world music but, yeah yeah and Olivier, um, who owns it, uh, I lived across the street. So th actually, that was like a community. That was like the Lower, uh, Lower East Side underneath one roof. You know, there was actors, there was poets, there was musicians. And I asked them, you know, before the music, could I do a show? And I did one. And I used to do shows there, you know, every few months, you know, um, and invite people. Mm -hmm. Um, just like in the East Village, you know, everyone would have each other's shows. And, what years uh, are we talking? What's that? What years are we talking? 
when I lived in Park Slope, I moved in 97. And I, and I, uh, well, that's a while ago. In the 2000s. And then the last one I did with a live audience was four years ago. And then I just did a virtual one uh, in December. And then I'm going to do oh. another one actually on the 9th of uh, April of this month. Yeah. You are. Yeah. So wait, that's coming up next week. Yep. Yeah. So through Barbez, through they have a through their web. Yeah. Uh, Barbez, I, I bumped into Olivier one at, in the park, and he asked me, and uh -huh. it, it's, a, it's oh my god, it was it was a tough one to do because there's you know no audience, and you just feel like you perform in front yeah, of yeah I know party. there's no right. interaction right well. Live live performance is all about what you're getting back. I mean, you know, the yeah. energy. Yeah, no, that's what I like, the feedback. I mean, the energy, you know. Um, it's like the same thing auditioning. You go in there and you kind of get the energy from people instead of putting yourself on tape. You Self-tape, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, so. you can gauge by a very subtle energy that's coming back. So you can, or sometimes not subtle, but you know, <laughs> sometimes it's like, you know, or sometimes it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, hopefully the latter, but uh, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, they were so much fun. And I wanna do, I wasn't gonna, after that one, I wasn't gonna do it anymore because it was so difficult. Cause I had people on Zoom and stuff and- um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Yeah, but I so I figured let me do another one. So now that I kind of understand how it works, so I don't have to. I went in there with one set of mind what to do, but it wasn't going to work. I realized it wasn't going to work right after the first thing I did. You know, <laughs> I just kind of threw everything away and just sweated it out. But I'm looking forward to doing this one. Oh, just good. Well, I'm going to come on. So, what uh, it's a uh, you go on your register. No, it, an, it's on, um, Barbes has their own site. Yeah, no, I know. I just thought maybe oh. it was like a, if it's on Zoom or something like that. Yeah, you can watch it live on their, on their site, Facebook or their site. Yeah. Okay. I got, oh, I see they're streaming it. Oh, got yeah. you. And then they save it on there. They got a couple of shows there. I see. There. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I lived around the corner too for, for quite a while and I was, I was, um, but I think it was a late, late, later. But maybe there, uh, there was some. I remember I was seeing somebody. She's still a very important person in my life. But uh, her name is Natalie, and she she lived on Tenth Street. Uh, uh, excuse me, no, yes, no, no, wrong, Twelfth Street. Uh, it, right, right between Fifth and Sixth, but almost like Sixth Avenue. And okay. and uh, we're a couple of times passing you. This is way before I introduced myself in Union Square, but you know, and you, hey, how are you? Because he, maybe you recognized her by sight or something like that. But uh, I would go over to Barbez quite frequently, but I, I never saw you there. But I would go there because it's just around the corner. Yeah. Um, and it's such a great place. And they had their own uh, label, right? Olivier has. Yeah. 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 So it's a really, it's a big deal. It's not, uh, he really managed to kind of make this whole uh, cult, music culture around this bar. Yeah, I was exposed to music that I was never exposed to before. Yeah. Sure, you know, which was right. Really wonderful. It's a party atmosphere there too. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but so I guess this was the first part of the last decade I'm talking about. But I maybe I would see you once in a while on the street. Right. Yeah, I was there. Yes, yeah, since till '97, and uh, I'm in Park Slope a lot. Uh, probably you were there just yeah, because you probably were already in Red Hook. Yeah. By then, it sounds like, right? When did I, you move? I commute from uh, Park Slope. Some people live on the East Coast and West Coast. Yes. And then Park Slope is my second home, yeah. I get it, yeah. You know? Sure. I'm, I'm almost hoping when my son's mother comes back that she gets a place in that area. Park Slope or? Yeah, or yeah. Well, I think that's, it's, I, well, you know, it, they, it, for all I know, she'll move into Manhattan, which, because, I'm talking in broad terms now, but it's almost as cheap just to live in Manhattan again. I, I, that's what I hear. You, re, you remember what we're talking about in the 80s, you could find a place, you know, like where you did, maybe in East Village or Lower East Side yep. and afford it. It might not be particularly um, 
cozy, but, uh, and then Brooklyn, people started going to Brooklyn because mm -hmm. it was just unexplored territory for those guys. And, right. you know, it was like cheaper, cheap, like I did when I moved out there. I, I, I my first rent on Smith street was, uh, six fifty, and I shared it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I was paying like three fifty, yeah. three twenty five a month. And, um, so I decided to just live, you know, take over the place. But, um, and then, uh, yeah, now people are just moving back because Brooklyn's got so expensive, so. Yeah, I feel like I live in the country. This is the country for me. Yeah. You know, really, you get off the subway, you got the sky, it's just. Oh, okay. It's not an overdeveloped area still, right, Red Hook? Right, they're starting to build uh, where there used to be houses. You know, there were open lots, but I knew it, and it's now they're starting to um, build but there's a, what, what is good about it is there's a zoning. So nothing is higher than like four floors. I know, but they are something they have called rezoning. <laughs> That's the problem. Well, they're trying to do something down by the water. And yeah, I know. I was going to say the problem with Red Hook, I mean, it's not a problem. It's the appeal. But the problem is that the developers have nothing but dollar signs in their eyes. And, you know, they have waterfront. That just means development to them. Yeah. I and mean, it's that, awful. It's really changed the... The skyline of is yeah he wants to build a 15 floor you know apartment complex and why you know the yeah. community voted against it 12 to 0 but he's trying to go around the zoning right so i don't know what's going to happen now I, I know there's a few more steps to but i just hope they don't do it yeah well bloomberg was really bad for in that way because he would help them figure it out who's that was just, i said bloomberg was i mean was 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 pro very pro developer so yeah. i mean i mean downtown brooklyn yeah look what markowitz, happened markowitz you know yeah he was all for that and sure. now downtown brooklyn i don't even like to go down to because it reminds me of the city you know exactly yeah and um oh it's a very big thing uh like subject that gets me pissed off. it's kind of one of the reasons why i left in a way too because i felt like my city that I grew up in. Yeah. You know, but I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming the angry guy on his lawn, you know, why I, you know, you yeah, know. I, I had to unlearn that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. You can't, you can't, if you're going to do that, just go. Yeah. Just get out because cities change. It's true. I just think that there's a natural way. And then there's this way, which was very, you know, a different story mm -hmm. where it was more like you know all these guys saw all these how to get extraordinarily rich and they kind of screwed with new york city's the fabric with the soul of the city mm -hmm. and you know so it's difficult it's a difficult thing to see yeah so that's kind of another reason why because I, I i absolutely did not want to feel frustrated by that what i was saying you know yeah i mean red hook i feel like i just wish they would leave it alone such of a course. Little, it's such a character a it, yeah, it's a little gem that it's different than Williamsburg. It's different than any other place along the water, you know? Yeah. It actually feels like a small fishing town somewhere, you know? So, is fish and fish, what is it called? Is the bait and tackle, what was it called, that that bar? Oh, yeah, right across the street. Uh, oh, really? They, uh, Barry, who owned it, uh, they jacked up his rent. And yeah. He, he was doing it for 15 years and just said, you know, forget about this. So now there's a place, uh, some people from Pioneer Works invested and they, uh, it's called San Pedro now. So okay. tacos and it's still a bar. Right. And the next door you got the Ice House. There's like three bars, Sonny's, Ice House and San Pedro and two of them are right next door to each other, right? Literally next door to each other, you know? And they're still, they survived the last year? Is that what you're saying? So far, yeah, yeah. That's good, that's good. Cause they I think both. we're close to getting I think so. Yeah, me too. I hope, so. I hope uh, yeah, I hope another, you know, way. Well, what I, what I hope is the next time I'm in that area is I'm going to meet me at Sonny's for. A, oh, yeah. Let's, let's get a quick drink at Sonny's. Yeah, they've been open because a lot of, uh, all three of them have, have outdoor spaces. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So we're allowed outside. So Sonny's, you know, the, um, Ice House and San Pedro, they have all, you know, and thank God, because then I would really go bonkers, you know. I know, right. 
everyone would be there in the backyard, even in the winter. Yeah. So if all you needed was like a half hour to an hour, you know, yeah. being around people, you would come home feeling all right. I so get it. Get that shot, you know? That's a good way to leave it right there. Um, I totally will be in touch. And um, thanks for, I know, you know, it was uh, tricky and took a while, but it was worth worth waiting. And I'm glad we got to talk. And oh, I hope you got what you needed. I... Well, I don't need anything. I just don't need much. Don't just need about, much. it's, it's, you know, a lot of the, uh, my point of doing it is, is um i don't know it's more it's more obscure or existential whatever the word is it's not always about plug something plug you know what i mean it's not go right. go go agenda agenda it's kind of like what we we're talking about with our mutual way of approaching life which is see where the where the wind takes us yeah <laughs> you know right. so yeah. i like that i think there are people that like to listen to that too uh-huh i know it's been interesting those master classes uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know why that came to mind, but it just got to give a plug in for that at least. They're, they're really amazing. I just seen the Spike Lee one, and it's really quite educating. Edu yeah. Yeah. And fun. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know because I haven't done any. I haven't. I, I, I have a couple of those um, at my access. That I have. Sorry, somebody upstairs must have just dropped. Uh, fell over or something i don't yeah. know yeah better go check on him now <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i was i was kind of interested in taking a look at that one and did you look at the scorsese one or no not yet i just started it so i started with the spike lee one first okay yeah that's yeah. good you're recommending it yeah especially since you know when we when i worked with him he's just he's a splendid guy you know he's just yes. I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm also kind of friendly with his brother. Um, I think I, so. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's a sweetheart. He also, he kind of lives, well, I guess maybe I shouldn't say, but he's in the South Slope. Gowanus, South Slope? Sunny side. Well, he's like on the cusp. I guess he's still in the slope. Yeah, I haven't seen him in, well, I've seen about a year and a half ago for the first time in years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, he's great. His whole family is great. His sisters, you know, his sister is great. And they're both they're wonderful actors too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, hang in there and um, enjoy the spring to come. Well, when it comes, when I'm sweating, then I'll know. <laughs> there, you, there you go. I got sweat and freeze, so. What's that? I'd rather sweat than freeze. That's my motto. I, 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 I like that. Me too, for sure. And we had a lot of freezing this year. Well, a lot of snow up here. I don't know if you had quite as much down there. It was a nice kind of unique thing because it was my first winter up here. But I wouldn't want every winter to be like that. Uh-huh. I don't think so. Yeah. But it was okay for one winter. But now I'm ready for the heat. <laughs> right. the, you know, upstate. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. Shake your hand, but you know, cold, know. can't do that now. <laughs> right, that's why. Give you the bump. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'll, all right, well, I'll be in touch. I'll, I'll let you know when I post this if you, um, yeah. you know. Very interesting. Take a look at it. That'll be great. All right. All right. Good, good talking. Same here, and thank you again. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right, man. Hang in there. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.